And then at labor, Bianca, of course, another very, very important place as they look to really fire up this economy again and get people off of unemployment. Uh, we know that the top contenders here are Julie Sue, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, Senator Bernie Sanders, of course, a very familiar name to a lot of people, mm. and Sarah Nelson, also uh, named as one of the contenders there, Bianca, and I think you'll be speaking with her soon. Yeah, perfect timing as far as booking goes. Jessica Dean, thank you. Five <laughs> slots still remain yep. to be filled. Happy holidays to you. We That's appreciate right. it. You too. Well, just in to CNN, United Airlines has announced that it will now require anyone flying from London's Heathrow into Chicago, Newark, D.C., or San Francisco to show proof of a negative COVID test taken within three days of departure. The move comes as a new highly contagious variant of COVID has run rampant through the U.K. capital. Sarah Nelson, as we just mentioned, is the international president of the Association of Flight Attendants. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. Your ears may be burning from us <laughs> just talking about you a few moments ago. But first, let me get your reaction to this move by United. Well, I think, listen, we've got to have a fulsome plan, and we've been asking for that since last January. And so, well, I think everyone is trying to do everything they can to contain the coronavirus, uh, contain the spread. And we have a really unique job in transportation with the work that we do around that. We've got to have a coordinated effort because otherwise it's like putting a drop of penicillin into the ocean. So um, this, is, this is something that we would support, of course, but this is something that has to be coordinated with the rest of the government and a fulsome plan to contain the virus. And of course, so many people now assume that the vi that that variant may already be here in the states as well. But let me turn to the the COVID relief bill that now hangs in the balance. Uh, the bill that Congress did put forward initially includes 15 billion dollars directly allocated for airlines. That 15 billion centers around the extension of the industry's payroll support program, which would bring back more than 32,000 employees who have been furloughed. Uh, your reaction to this chaos and how it's potentially threatening your industry. Bianca, we have been working on this, and this is actually our plan. A lot of people are not aware of what we did. We put in place a workers first program here that is that requires that all the money has to go to payroll and benefits of the workers. And the airlines in return have to keep everyone on the job, so not on the unemployment lines, but continuing to get their paychecks connected to their health care and continuing to serve all of our communities. The other thing that we did with this was we capped executive compensation and banned stock buybacks, and that's well after the relief ends. So that will be extended when the payroll support is extended as well. This is a template that the Biden administration would like to use for other industries, and it is the best template historically in our country to put forward relief that is actually the best use of the public's money. So this is $15 billion that would get people back on the payroll. You mentioned the people who are currently furloughed, they would be recalled. And it would also restore paychecks to people who have gone on no pay status as well. So over 100,000 people who currently are not getting paid are afraid of losing their health insurance completely because the, the corporations, because of our contracts, have continued to cover that COBRA coverage up till now. But at the end of this month, they'll lose that without putting this in place. And that joins the 17 million children who are going hungry, the 30 to 40 million who are at risk of losing their homes at the end of this month. And on Saturday, the 12 million who will fall off of unemployment completely. This bill is about containing the virus, getting emergency aid to people as a bridge so that we can fight for more. And it's putting all of that in jeopardy right now. And if you think about those 17 million children around Christmas, you think yeah. about their parents, too, who are, who are having to deal with this. And th this is heartbreaking, and it's got to change, and the president's got to sign the bill. It's, it's heartbreaking and unacceptable, frankly, in the richest country in, in the world. No doubt your industry has been one of the hardest hit throughout this pandemic. Uh, but I do want to end by asking you about the vacancies uh, the president-elect is working to fill, as you heard. Uh, and I'm sure you're aware your name has been floated uh, for possible labor secretary consideration. What can you tell us about that? Has the Biden team reached out to you and would you take the job if offered? 
Well, look, I've been talking with the Biden team and talk with them all the time. I was on the Biden Sanders Economy Task Force, and I am really focused on getting this program extended because, as I said, this is a great template for the rest of the country and every other industry. And so that's where my focus is. I'll continue to talk with the Biden admi- uh, transition team about getting this relief in place and getting more in place in the new year. And uh, that's really my focus. And if I were to get a call from the president-elect, that would be an incredible honor. But we have to take care of the people who have tremendous needs right now and keep our focus on that. No doubt a lot of work that you have to do. Sarah Nelson, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.